Warning! The following video features custom and fabrication work performed either by a professional or under the supervision of professionals. Welcome back, part number three of the roll cage build. So I promised you we were going to finish this thing today, so we're going to get right to work. So let's begin by showing you what I've been busy with. All right, this doesn't look like much, but this is eight different pieces that I needed for both the door bars and the upper halo part to cover your head. This took me about an entire one of my days off. I didn't want to bother filming it all for you because it was all monotonous and boring. So you cut, you grind, you cut and grind. And after you're done, you end up with a pile of cut pieces that looks like this. So at that point I was definitely regretting the I don't have a tube knocker configuration. Either way I finished it up. Here's just a closer look at how they come out and give you a better idea we're going to throw this on the car. Alright, and lastly, like I mentioned, I had to add these bends in here to meet this main hoop of the cage. So this is going to cause a little bit of a weakness in this near your head, so it's a very important part. So this is why we're adding these, just for added support. And they're going to go in just as that. that. Okay, so now that this thing is actually looking like a roll cage, uh, the only next thing to do is take it all out. So the reason for that being is you cannot weld on the top sections of this thing at all. Um, so what we do is remove these lower blocks, which I have to weld the back halves of, remove these front plates, and we're going to drill recess holes in here so we can drop this down bars through this actual OEM frame rail, which will give me the space to get up top of those and weld them in a systematic order. So first things first, remove roll cage prop blocks. All right, so we're gonna remove this base plate and we can see where this main tube actually is going to intersect or contact the original frame rail. So now I can mark out with my wax pen where I need to remove this to recess it while we weld the top joints. Now it's gonna go repeat the same process on the other side. Thank you. 
Now here is the entire roll cage out and just on the floor. There's the main hoop. Now one of the main purposes for taking all this out is here so I can do all most of these welds on the door bars on the table. That way I'm not killing myself trying to bend all around in there and do it in the car and trying to make it look nice. So we're going to bench weld those as well as the seat belt bar on the main hoop. And back inside the car, this is the lower frame rail that we need to cut this recess out so we can drop this main hoop through here to recess it down to give it space on the top. So we're going to use this hole saw and we're going to start clearing it out of the way. So for a better understanding, here is our giant hole that we cut out on our frame rails. And here is just a sample piece so what I can show you as a visual for the uprights. So this recess is down in there about four inches. The actual plate that we're going to use is going to prevent that. So we're going to get everything tacked up in the car, remove the plates, drop the whole cage down in the recess, do my welds up top, lift the cage back up plates back on, then we'll be able to fully weld the cage. Just like that so here you go 
I got both sides of my door bars fully welded up and I don't have to worry about all the acrobatics of doing it in the car. So since we have these done, we're gonna start putting this cage back together. All right, so we just got everything tack welded back in here, and these are just put in here just to see if it still fits, and it does. And we can't weld these up until last. So we're gonna remove these. And we're gonna try and drop this into recesses, so now we're gonna drop the front block and the rear block, and see if we can pull it off the grooves in the back and drop it down. All right, I went and got the other side freed up, so we're gonna try and drop all four corners of this down off the recess. Here we go. Now we have room to access wells on the top all four corners. All right, now here's just another look from the inside. You can see how this is recessed itself into that frame rail giving us the space that we needed above the weld. Just another view from the back side you can see that this main hoop is now resting on the existing part of the frame rail and these were the prop blocks that I originally had over here so it gave me the extra space. So welding upside down or TIG welding upside down is definitely not as much fun as it's cracked up to be. So I did get all my upper joints TIG welded up. At this point we're going to grab the entire cage, lift it up through those recesses, and we need to drop it on the top of these uprights in the back. So we're going to move this up now. And moving right along, these are the rear boxes. I told you we had a weld in a certain sequence earlier. So I've already welded the back halves on because I'm not going to be able to get to them later. We're going to put this in position. We're going to come and weld the back corner and then along the inside here. And then lastly, weld in the, the face plate of it. And then we're going to come along and weld the full seam around the cage itself.
foot plates fully welded up all the way around. And the same on the front. So the next thing we gotta do are the door bars. The cage is fully welded and we're now ready to move on to the next thing. We're going to start welding in our gussets. So let's get those on that cage. So before we start welding, I just did some prep work and I just marked off where I'm going to weld along the sides. So I staggered them and I have one inch welds along each side.
So on a final note, the affordable bender did an excellent job in making this cage. However, there's only one flaw I came up with. It is this actual grabber that holds the tube itself. Uh, you can see it oblongs the holes on both sides, which allowed it to get some play in the um, die, which also put off the degree of angle that I was turning. So other than that, just to upgrade this, I'm going to reinforce these holes. And if you make the mistake that I do, I don't know if you can tell, you can bend the bolt if you don't tighten the nut on it. But simple. Wow, that was a lot of work. However, I'm really happy with how it turned out. That machine performed pretty well for what I paid for it. I'm sure I'm going to use it again in the future. However, next time when I come back, we're probably going to start working on the cooling system or the interior. See you then.